everyone, and welcome to vlog 16B of Ready Persona 1. I really enjoyed watching you your session, <laughs> by the way. I didn't expect it to be as wholesome as it was. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the parts of the children. Just watching Black Powder and Cade interact with each other was, I don't know, it was really, it was better than I, than I anticipated, better than I imagined it would be. Yeah. Yeah, I think you made a good choice with who to pair me with. There was a lot of parallels, and I think, I think Black Powder is could was probably the only person you could talk to him on that level. Yeah, I feel like Black Powder continued his theme of uh, adopting people because uh, now he has he has his like yeah. wholesome son in Frankie. He has his flamboyant son in Star. He has his a goth daughter. And now he has a murder son. Yeah, a murder son. <laughs> But I, I found it very um, interesting how well uh, it really it, I really like empathize with Cade when he said uh, nobody else seemed to understand or like just get him. Um, it would seem like Black Powder was the very first person, even Dr. Janice, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I, um, and I, I love that. I love that uh, somehow they were able to speak the same language and sort of but the beauty is they they also didn't completely agree with each other either yeah. and i i kind of like i like that a lot uh which is a cool 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 dynamic yeah i think he really need kate really needed someone to call him out and just be like you just like it shut up with all your crap and just admit it like yeah <laughs> need someone to just not give in to his pretend world and he also does fully think like if you kill old folks or children you're just a coward who's afraid to go after anyone who might be able-bodied mm -hmm. <laughs> like you're just you're just picking off the easy folk you're just a wimp <laughs> which is pretty fair because kate is a wimp he he can't fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with well body well now he's got a murder bowl so that might change a little bit but yeah but i think there was a lot of truth to that yeah i i like the like almost instant rapport they got Cause like they were joking about black powder not being very social, but neither is Cade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cade's going through this thing where he's he's he struggles with physical touch, um, and not even romantically, just in general. So I thought I, I actually thought it was kind of cool that Cade tried to poke black powder, and black powder's like, "Don't touch me." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I, I'm not sure if. Uh, <clears throat> Cade, I like that too. If I, I felt like Sage caught that. I wasn't sure if Cade caught that, that he also doesn't like to be touched or has a uh -huh. thing with with touchy feely people. Or... Yeah, Sage definitely caught it. Did, did Cade not particularly, no? Like, I, I very much got a feel that Cade could have basically been a young version of BP. Yeah, I got a lot of that. Like BP could very easily be like, oh, this is my, kind of my future in a weird mm. way. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Especially it's like if I was raised in your world, I probably would have had the exact same outcome. Like we felt very parallel, just different ages and different worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different lives. Yeah. And yet so, so similar. Yeah. It does make me curious to see how it's going to be when it, you're, you reunite with your group. Mm -hmm. And I will say that this did give Cade a, a actual tangent to go off on that it did change his path. That... He mm -hmm. does want to try out to see if it feels good to kill bad people. Yeah. I think you'll have some opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> to <do that. laughs> I mean, did it feel good for him when he was killing the outcasts? Um, so that was like, that was protective, Cade. Mm, protective. Um, yeah, that was, that was not joy. That was just, I need to protect these. He, he was acting like a bodyguard in that moment. Mm, okay. Um, he kind of goes savage, but... Yeah. That was the vibe behind it. One behind the scenes thing, and I don't know if any of you caught it, but the when I was trying to name all the children, I actually named them after the characters from the Rugrats. So I, Angelica, Tommy. I did they, not. I I didn't watch the Rugrats, but I needed a group of kids' names, and that's where I pulled from was and yeah, Angelica's the the bossy one. And <laughs> So, yeah, just like, <clears throat> oh boy, what were we going to say, Sage? I'm sorry. Just on the subject of the outcasts, I think that 
Uh, Kate actually relates to them quite a bit. He doesn't see them as bad people. He actually is like, no, I get it. They're, I would probably do the same thing in their shoes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did intend on there being more uh, interactions with Taylor, with Cade, and then maybe even bringing in Henry. Um, we just didn't have the time. Uh, but I was really satisfied with the amount that we had with the characters that we had here. The Felix Felix conversation with Kate, as brief it as was it was, I thought was also was also a nice touch too. So. <clears throat> I felt a little bit bad about sending Felix away, but at the same time, VP wasn't going to talk about murder in front of that kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys both did a good job of bringing, of pulling all that information out of Kate because he does hold it. You guys did mm -hmm. great. Thank you. That was the that was the goal is we wanted to try to hit those points before the full group was there. Yeah. Um, Cause I didn't know if we'd have that opportunity. And I totally want you to as Sage, but Cade of course is like, yeah. Now I did find that Cade seemed to open up to black powder pretty early. Like what was it that he saw in Reggie that made him think, yeah, I can kind of open up a little bit about my past more. It was the kids. It was the kids. It was a combination of two things. It was the kids originally just kind of being chill with this guy. So it's like, okay, these are orphans and they look at mm. this person as their caretaker. So he likes them instantly mm. because of that. And then the second is when um, BP called him out on his shit. Mm. Bullshit, that at first he was like offended and taken aback. But because it was so like brutally honest, it, it just opened up the gateways for him to be brutally honest back. I think it's a combination of those two things. Yeah. I, I and I find that interesting because I think that also was why you and Jennifer uh got along really quickly too. Because Jennifer also she does she cuts to the BS. She doesn't yeah. she just like just tell me how it is. <laughs> like Yeah, it's unfortunate, but Kay Kay carries a lot of bullshit in him. And so the people who can cut through it are the ones who can reach him. Yeah. Very neat. The other thing I also really like about this is it's just I always find it um, entertaining watching Cade be very childlike, uh, just being with the kids, but also at the end when he just wanted to play in the ball pit. Mm -hmm. um, and I is that because you feel he missed out on a lot from his childhood and therefore is making up for lost time? Definitely. Yeah, I thought Definitely. I think that's really neat. I want to say thank you. To this will thank you for, yeah. thank you for uh, being you and bringing out Kate and it was a lot of fun yeah, it was a lot of fun being back and playing BP again um, yeah. and I, I had a question for you Sage of did you accomplish with Kate what you wanted to accomplish with this spinoff yeah so to be honest with you my my goals I didn't really have any concrete goals so I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how much was accomplished Specifically, I think it's cool that you did change Kate throughout that. I wasn't sure, you know, how Kate would change through it or even if he would. And I was OK with any outcome. But I do like that you're specifically you reached him. A lot of people have said, do this, try this, do this. Um, but he was like kind of hesitant to do it and kind of is doing it, but always at arm's length. This is something mm -hmm. he can commit to and actually is excited to try. It, it actually like makes sense to you yeah as opposed to i i guess like totally. sure i'll try it yeah it resonates i love that i love that i also the one other thing i also liked about this is that um i it, it almost feels like the uh reggie is having practice raising a kid <laughs> you know when all the interactions he's having with kate i feel like that sounds like a Yes, we joke about how Reginald is one of the father figures in the Athenaeum campaign, but here you can clearly see him sort of mentoring Cade and like just trying to relate with him. Um, and I'm like, he's going to be a good dad. He's going to be a very good dad. Yeah. No, something I honestly wasn't expecting was the fact that Cade also had an effect on Black Powder. <laughs> in what way? Well, it is a case of like Black Powder's been working kind of on his whole redemption thing but that is the violence and murder is still very much a part of his life and who he is and now he has someone who he can talk to about it and relate mm. 
because even though Frankie would mention that like, oh, you've shown me that being bad can be kind of fun. Frankie's still just a good guy at heart. Um, and none of the others ever really came to even really understand Reggie and his violent nature that he does have. And now it's kind of like, oh, um, I have almost like a, a war buddy kind of thing where it's like, okay, we can talk about these things that we can't, that other people wouldn't really understand. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe it needs a bit of redirecting, but we get each other. Yeah. I, I think to be fair, the other Athenaeum PCs, when it comes to Black Powder's past, they have a tendency to just sweep it under the rug. Yeah. It's like, oh, I mean, that's just how he was before. You know, and they are they're almost like apologizing for you. And he's better now. Yeah, like I guess I guess a good end is ba- uh Black Powder's violence is still very much a part of him, but he has essentially retired from it to become yeah. a family man. It's never gonna go away. And occasionally he'll still get the man, I miss the adventures, I miss the call of the sea and the swashbuckling, but I have more important things to do. Um, you just you just know it's right under the surface. You know if someone's threatening his family or his kid. Oh yeah, it's go time. That's yeah, like right there. It's not a hundred percent. Anything bad happens, Black Powder will happily, brutally murder somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it it was nice for him to just be able to be like, yeah, no, this is cool. You get it. Awesome. <laughs> I have a friend who yeah. gets it. Um, I, I also like just the dark humor of this session. It was dark <laughs> but funny. Yeah, a lot of dark humor. Sweet. Uh, anything else before we close? No, I feel satisfied. Great. Awesome. Thank you both for hanging out hanging out today. It was great to see the two of you role play and cannot wait to see you with the rest of the group. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Gonna All right, be guys, fun. Have a great night. <laughs>